I want to now spend some time on this topic, which is the crux of everything that we've done so far, that when we write any script for doing data processing, the recommended way to write that script would be to write a processing script. Instead of writing this in the console and kind of doing things manually, we can build a nice user interface where the user will have option to choose the input layer, find the output layer, configure parameters, just the way you do with any of the tools in the processing toolbox. And we have a way to write scripts that integrate with the processing toolbox and allow to do data processing. This is the recommended way whenever you are writing code for developing a new tool for yourself or for your team, please make sure you write a processing script. It is good idea to test your script using the console. This is a great environment for kind of interactively testing and figuring out what's the right code for you to do data processing. But once you're ready, you can take the script and convert it to a processing script. Let's learn about how to do this. We have a short presentation. If anybody has tried writing QGIS processing scripts, they seem very complex. There's a lot of, you know, the documentation is not that great. So I'll try to demystify the process of writing processing script as much as possible. I'll show you step by step how you take the existing script and convert it to a processing script and all the advantages that we have that it offers. The processing scripts are also known as algorithms. So during the presentation or even afterwards when you hear create a new processing algorithm that also is the same thing as creating a processing script. QGS refers to all the tools as algorithms and you can create one new algorithm using a script which is using the processing API. QGS has a processing framework which allows you to have a standardized way to take user inputs, configure parameters and run your workflows. So rather than trying to build that user interface ourselves and trying to do the data processing using our own method, we'll use the processing API to do all the user interface and processing for us. This allows us to write code, which is much shorter, which will create a really nice user interface, which is the same as all the other processing tools. So users don't have to learn some new user interface. It also integrates with the rest of the toolbox. So it looks and feels very similar to a built-in algorithm. I am a very strong proponent of using this API for creating user interface. Your QGS users are used to running tools in a certain way. They already know how to select layers from the processing tools. They know how to write output to a specific place. Do not build new user interfaces. Even if you try very hard, you'll not be able to you know, build something as fluid and nice as the processing toolbox. Even if you build something nice, the users have to learn something new. So as much as possible, please use this API, which will allow you to create the user interfaces without writing the code and use the standard widgets that come with the processing toolbox. User validation. Remember, in when we're writing scripts, we have to do the validation. Please select a layer. Please select a vector layer. Our tool doesn't work with raster layer and so on. You, you should have at least one feature selected. All of those validation, it's quite cumbersome to do. Well, if you write a processing script, the processing API does all of that for you. You don't have to write even a single line of code for doing validation. It just comes in free when you use the processing API. Same with multi-threading. If you want to run your algorithm on multiple processing in doing parallel computing, you want to run it in background. All of this is very hard to do for your scripts. But if you use the processing API, you get, again, okay, all of this free without doing any work. What if your users want to run your script as batch processing? Processing tools allow them to do that without you having to code explicit support for it. You can display a nice progress bar. Remember when we are working with large layers and you press the run button, your script hangs because it's doing something. It's not running in the background. Don't see how much is this finished. You get a nice progress bar when you use the processing tools. You can also display error messages much nicely to the user. And most importantly, when you build a new tool using this API, you get a tool that you can use with in the QGIS model designer to integrate with other tools. So you can now your users can build a model which uses your tool as one of the steps. And that's a big thing where most QGIS toolbox offers a lot of tools. You can just add a tool that is missing the functionality that you need for your project. And then rest of the tools you can just use from the QGIS processing toolbox. So if this sounds like a good idea and you want to do it, let's learn how to do this. When you want to write new processing algorithms, you have to write a class. Now this, starting from this is what it feels intimidating. When you start writing scripts, all Python programmers have written scripts, you know how to write scripts. But then the moment I say you have to write a class, 
and that becomes a little more challenging. But we'll go through the process and see how it works. Why class? Because you create a new class that inherits from this class called QGS processing algorithm. This is a very big class that knows how to create this dialog boxes, how to do the validation, how to do batch processing, everything that the processing algorithms need to know, it has already implemented. So you don't need to implement it again. You just say, I'll inherit from that, I'll get all the functionality. The stuff that you have to write apart from inheriting this class is you have to define some methods such as what's the name of the algorithm, what's the help description and so on. So again, this is something that you can just define in your code, what the algorithm does and what's its name. For implementing a functionality, you need to implement these two methods. So the problem of translating any script into a processing script is essentially taking the code and putting it into one of these two methods. There's one method called init algorithm that defines what is your input? What inputs you need for to select from the user? You need to select a vector layer, raster layer, you need to take input of number and so on. On output, what's the output type? Do you want to, the user to save a vector layer, a raster layer, a mesh layer, whatever. You can specify the inputs and outputs here and then build those dialog boxes with the drop downs. And second one is the process algorithm. So when the user says I've configured my inputs and output, I'm gonna click run. When they click run, this is what it's called. So this is where you will take the code of your script and put it here. That will run the code that you wrote on the selected inputs. So we'll go through the process. We'll say we have a script. We want to convert to processing script. We'll create this class. We'll define all these names and we'll implement these two methods using the code that we already have. When you're writing processing scripts, there are some terminology that you encounter in some of the class names and also while kind of looking at the documentation, we'll understand some of those terminology, what it means you'll be encountering this variable called context. All the processing algorithms, when you say run, it'll say, here is my context, use that. And so what is this context? The context contains all the settings that the, you have configured in your project. When the processing tools are running, they need to know, you know how, do you, how do I do validation? And there are some default values that are set in the processing settings. All of the settings are passed on to the object as a context object. Most users don't need to worry about it. You just say, I have been passed a context, I'll just keep passing it on. And every algorithm that needs to know, it'll ask the context and find the settings that they need. Feedback, this is an object that displays the progress bar and any messages. So when you are running your code, you say, I'm processing the data, you will keep updating this feedback object and say feedback dot set progress 10%, set progress 20%, and that will update the progress bar. So feedback is the object that the processing API uses to display the progress bar and also display some error messages. The processing tool classes also use this terminology called source and sync. Most tools, if you think about all the data processing you've done, they, if you're using vector layers, they read data from a vector layer, do some processing and write features. So you read features and you write features. And so the processing API provides you with some specialized classes called QGIS Feature Source and QGIS Feature Sync, which allows you to read and write features easily. So if you have some vector layer, you want to read the features and you want to write it, you'll use source and sync instead of vector layer. So this is again, inherits from the QGIS vector layer class, but again, it gives you an, a much simpler API to interact with getting and writing features. So this is what the terminology means. With that, let's learn how to translate our regular script into a processing script. If you see any processing script, they are very long. They contain what we call a boilerplate code. Boilerplate code is a code that is same in all scripts. You need to write some code just to initialize your script, which is very similar in all the instances of the script. And so you just copy the boilerplate from one script to the other and modify stuff. So that's why in QGIS, you have this option, create new script from template. And that's what we recommend that don't start writing all the code from scratch. It's just start from a template. You have all the boilerplate, just change the stuff you need and implement those two methods that you need to implement for doing the work in your code. So with that, let's go and write the processing algorithm. I've also linked to some examples. If you want to read the official documentation, it describes this process again as a documentation. I have several examples of scripts which show you how to write specific kinds of processing scripts. So if you want to learn how to define certain inputs or how to do some specific processing, you can read my blog post. Also a pro tip is a lot of times when I'm writing the scripts, I said, I don't know how to take input for this particular variable. I'll go and find a QGIS processing tool 
which does something similar. And I'll go and look at the code for that. Because QGIS is open source, you have the code for creating all of those processing algorithms available to you. So again, if you say, I don't really know how to use this particular class, go and search for this in the QGIS GitHub page, and you'll find how QGIS internally uses that class. And it's a good example for you to learn from.